In this tutorial, we'll guide you through the process of replicating the iconic IQON building designed by big architects using Grasshopper. We'll start by examining the final script, and then we will create the building from scratch. All we need to do is reference the curves. By referencing those curves, we can generate the building based on them. You can generate more variations by selecting different types of curves. We will see more parameters as we proceed. Let's get started by creating the base curve. To help us determine the size, I will create a reference rectangle that measures 27 meters by 12 meters. Next, create an L-shaped curve inside the rectangle. Feel free to create any shape that you prefer. We'll reference the curve into Grasshopper using a curve container. To accomplish this, simply right-click on the curve component and select Set One Curve from the context menu. Next, we'll extrude the curve in the Z direction. The extrusion factor will be determined by the building height. For this example, let's assume our building has 12 levels and each with a height of 2.7 meters. To set the Z factor, we'll simply multiply the number of levels by their height. This will ensure that our extrusion snaps accurately to each floor. Now that we have our extrusion, we can create staggered quad panels using the Lunchbox plugin. We'll connect the extrusion directly to it. However, the current pattern is flipped vertically, so we'll need to adjust the surface UV. To do this, we'll use the Adjust UV component from the Intralattice plugin and set Swap UV to True. You may notice that the distance between each vertical division isn't uniform. To fix this, we'll rebuild the surface with a degree of 3 at a higher UE count. We'll adjust the V count for our panels to match the floor count we set earlier. Since we used 11 floors, we'll set the panel V count to 11 as well. This will give us 11 vertical cells that match the floor count. Next, we'll extract the base curve from each panel. From each curve, we'll find the midpoint. We'll then create rectangles centered on these midpoints, which will serve as the basis for our cells. To extract the curve, we'll connect it directly to the curve component and then use that explode component to obtain each of the four segments separately. From those segments, we'll select one of them using the list item component. Once we have the base curves, we can find their midpoints. These points will follow the staggered panel pattern. Based on these points, we'll create our cells by forming rectangles at each midpoint. The dimensions of these rectangles will be determined by the length of the segments, ensuring that the rectangular cells fit perfectly within the structure. Since the points are in the middle, we need to position the rectangles at the center. To achieve this, we'll set the X and Y sizes using domains based on the segment lengths. We'll then apply the expression X over 2 to each domain, connecting the results to the input of the domain component. For the B input, we'll set the negative value of the result. This ensures the rectangles are centered on the points. We'll apply the same approach for both the X and Y sizes to create well-aligned cells. To visualize our progress, we'll first create surfaces from the rectangles and then extrude them in the Z direction. The extrusion factor will be the floor height that we set earlier. I'll quickly visualize our progress using the custom preview component. Now we'll rotate each cell based on their distance from the base curve starting point. The rotation angle will start at a minimum for the first cell and gradually increase as we move along the curve. By the time we reach the last cell, the rotation will be 90 degrees. So what I'm going to do is extract the rectangles and rotate them from their center. To find the center, we can use an area component. To set different rotation values for each cell, 
we first need to find the parameter of the center points relative to the base curve. We'll use a curve closest point component for this purpose. We'll reparameterize the curve, resulting the value between 0 and 1. Then we'll multiply it as parameters by 90, effectively remapping the values to a 0 to 90 range. These values will serve as our rotation factors. This means that the cells at the end of the structure will rotate by 90 degrees, while the first cell will have a rotation of 0 degrees. For more control over the rotation transition, we'll remap the parameters using the graph mapper. The goal is to achieve a smooth transition between the start and end of the structure. For even more greater control, you can use the Bezier 2 graph type, which allows for one more Bezier handle for more adjustments. All right, so at the end of all odd floors, we have these half cells that we need to remove by joining them to their neighboring cells. Our strategy is to join all the base curve and remove the control points that create those segments. Let me bring out the curves here and join them. Once we join the curve, we can take a look at the control points by using the control points component. You'll see that on all odd floors, there are control points that create these smaller segments. So our first task is to select these curves using a pattern of zero and one and remove those control points. Let's take a look at the orders by connecting list item. We'll see that they're not sorted as expected. To make things easier, we'll sort them in the Z direction. To sort these curves, I'll first find the points on each curve. Then I'll deconstruct the points and use the Z coordinate of each point as a key for the sort component, and the curves will go to value A input. We can see the order in which they are arranged. Next, we'll separate the odd and even floors using the dispatch component. Once we've successfully separated the odd and even curves, we'll proceed to remove the control points using the cull index component. Since we have two segments at the start and end, we'll use indices 1 and minus 2 to get rid of these control points. Now we can create polylines using the remaining control points. If we take a look at the control points now, we'll see that the unwanted ones are gone. To reassemble the sets of curves while maintaining their original order, we'll use the weave component. This will help us combine both odd and even sets of curves seamlessly. Finally, we'll use the explode component to retrieve the individual segments from the polylines. Let's group this setup and name it Remove Smaller Segments. Then I'll replace the previous segments with this new setup. Now that we've successfully removed the smaller cells, we'll continue to the next step, which is creating panels, walls, and floors. To create the panels, our first task is to select only the faces that are outside the overall shape. Keep in mind that these cells overlap when we rotated them earlier, so we'll need to carefully choose those faces. First, Let's focus on the rectangles and select the front segments. To do this, I'll explode the rectangles and then use the list item component to pick out the front segments. Now let's find the region union for each floor. This will give us the boundary for each rectangle on every floor. Then using the resulting boundaries, we can extract the curve segments where both sets of curves intersect. First, I'll match the data structure by trimming the last level of the rectangle cells. Once the data trees are properly matched, I can find the curve-curve intersections. This process gives us intersection points at both the start and end, and these points will be placed in one branch. 
This way, we can directly connect them to the polyline component to obtain the intersection lines. Next, I'll convert these lines into surfaces by extruding them in the z-direction. The extrusion factor will be similar to the floor height we set earlier. All right, now let me walk you through the process of creating frames and panels for each surface. First, I use the lunchbox quad panel component and set the U division to one and the V division to two. For the frames, I converted the surfaces to meshes using the simple mesh component. Next, I created the frames and panels using a combination of Weaverbird's picture frame and mesh window components. To give the frame some thickness, I use the offset mesh component from Pufferfish. Finally, we can assign different materials to each element. We are now going to proceed to create walls. First, I will extract the boundary curves that we obtained from the region union, as well as the front curves that we obtained from the polyline. Now, using both sets of curves, we will remove the curves that lie at the base of the panels. The idea is to merge both sets of curves and then remove any curves that have duplicates. First, I'll explode the region union curve into smaller segments. Then, I'll trim the last branches of the first set of curves to ensure a similar branch structure. After that, I'll merge both curves together. To ensure that all corresponding curves are in similar branches, I'll simplify both inputs. Now, I will find the midpoint of each curve. Using the cold duplicate component, I can remove the points that have duplicates. Make sure to choose Cull All so that we can remove all points that have duplicates. Using the index of those points, we can choose the curves that don't have duplicates. Next, we will extrude the curves in the Z direction to create the walls. The Z factor will be the same as the height of the panels, which we previously defined. To give the walls some thickness, we'll use the offset surface component. Next, we're going to create the floors. One thing we need to keep in mind is that the region of each floor is a combination of itself and the floor below it. For example, if we want to get the total boundary of the first floor, it means it's the region covered by itself and the ground floor. To apply this, I will move the boundaries up by one level. This factor is similar to panel height. Now for the unmoved boundary curves, I will add a null placeholder item at the end. The index will be minus one. For the boundary that was moved by one level, I will insert null placeholder item at the beginning. The index will be zero. I can merge both sets of boundary curves and find the region union. I will graph both inputs to place corresponding curves in similar branches. I will create surfaces from the region union and give them thickness using the offset surface component. When you modify the curve, the building structure will actively follow its new shape. So if you want to add even more variety to your building, try changing the base curve. I've pulled out the most necessary parts, but you can add more parameters to control some of the cells. For example, you could adjust the scale in one direction using scale non-uniform component. You can also create railings by selecting the boundaries of these faces. That's it for this tutorial. If you want to access this Grasshopper script and all the final project files, they're available on my Patreon page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.